According to the deadly plants information, in order to perform our experiment, we will need fertilizer and food. Caterpillars should do nicely. My analysis table. It is useful for... Are you aware of the Divine Syndicate? The Divine what? Is this a joke? No, I am quite serious. What a ridiculous name. Anyway, I have never heard of this syndicate. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Tell me, have you ever heard of the Divine Syndicate? No, I cannot say that I have. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again. Water. The Divine Syndicate. Does that name mean anything to you, by any chance? Not at all. But it is a very pretty name. Uh, thank you, miss. Do you have... No. Not worthy there.
Do you have... None. Not worthy there. Nevertheless, we have seen Kew Gardens flower pots in your yard. How could they happen to be there? What? Our sacred place you permitted yourself to search. Sacrilege. No, oh, really now. There was a theft of plants at Kew Gardens a matter of days ago. And we believe the pots we found here may be connected with it. Please tell us, were you involved? No. Those plants were ours. They had stolen them from us. How so? Uh, their director. Dump, I believe. Done. Yes, that's, that's what I said. He borrowed from us three of our sisters for the exhibition at his green fly infested gardens. But he never gave them back to us. Excuses and imbecility. So we went in and saved them. I see. So if you stole those rare plants from them, then it means... Ah, I get it. Bravo, Holmes. I think the case is solved. No, we did not steal. We saved. Well, as a matter of fact, we were unable to find our three plants. I beg your pardon. And yet you took all of the exotic plants from the stand. They had disappeared. It was the least we could do. They stole our sisters, and so we stole theirs. Well, we will leave you to your meditation. A vast amount of opium. This substance is an alkaloid, the same as in the bottle we found in the bushes at Kew Gardens. Perfect, Watson. We can begin our experiment. I imagine that one of these plants would be capable of releasing a toxic vapor. I need to find out exactly how it could be done. I shall begin now. Watson, if you are at all optimistic to have dinner this evening, then I'd recommend that you put on the gas mask. My word, it shot a spike at me after I stabbed it with a pin. I imagined that its reaction would be ferocious if I increased the strength of my attack. No reaction.
This It appears to open after being soaked with alkaloid. This plant becomes inactive after being drenched with alkaloid. How interesting. What a strong and effective defensive mechanism. I find the behavior of predators utterly fascinating. It closed again. I believe I saw a small cloud of gas. I wonder what secrets this plant is hiding. Perhaps if we agitate it to a greater extent whilst it is opened, it will reveal a little more. I am interested in what might occur if the prickly plant should shoot at it. This plant becomes inactive after being drenched with alkaloid. It appears to open after being soaked with alkaloid. This plant becomes inactive after being drenched with alkaloid. It closed again. I believe I saw a small cloud of gas. I wonder what secrets this plant is hiding. Perhaps if we agitate it to a greater extent whilst it is opened, it will reveal a little more. I am interested in what... It appears to open after being soaked with alkaloid. It closed again. I wonder what... I am interested... A prickly plant. A carnivorous plant. This is a strain. It. This plant seems to have had no reaction from the caterpillar. This plant seems to have had no reaction from the caterpillars. Toxic gas with spores. Extraordinary. The plants would be capable of killing only if they were directly next to the victim and stimulated at precisely the right moment. Let us take our caterpillars to the colonial collection room. We may see things more clearly there. It is too early, Watson. Our suspects will be there. Let us investigate Kew Gardens one more time and ask some questions.
Can you tell me? Yes, of course. I met him. And he appeared quite... What were you doing on the morning of the accident? After paying multiple visits to Albert, I had a little talk with Miss White. Then I returned to my desk to complete some paperwork. Suddenly I observed that Mr. Dunn was not feeling well, so I ran immediately to fetch Albert. I clearly remember that it was around half past ten, for I was late that morning. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Your father's death does seem highly suspicious. What were your movements here on that day? Suspicious? Well, I was working in the seed house, taking care of a uh, Lysip uh, something, or, or Lear Pontus, or... No, wait. Ah, oh, these Latin names. And I spent so many hours trying to memorize them. Did you see your father that day? Yes. He came here with Mr. Hamish for his weekly visit. There was nothing unusual about that. And then? Nothing. They stepped out to the backyard. It was We're perhaps to the 20 minutes before 10 o'clock. Then about 10 minutes later, I saw my father heading for the dry tropics room while Mr. Hamish returned here. And Mr. Hamish and Miss White, what were they both doing that morning? Mr. Hamish visited me a couple of times. I also saw him returning from talking with Miss White, and that was at 10 minutes past 10. But then he ran back here to me to tell me that my father was feeling unwell. We hurried across to the water lily room and I found my father lying dead on the floor. Oh my God. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. Can you tell me what Mr. Dunn was doing upon the day of his death? I can, but there is nothing very special to say. I was in the laboratory when I saw Mr. Dunn heading towards me. Tuesday is the day of his weekly visit. It was supposed to be at nine, but he was ten minutes late, as usual. And then? Well, he came in to say good morning. Then I saw him spend two or three minutes by the plants outside the laboratory. After that, he ran out in the direction of the nursery, where Mr. Hamish was working. He was always in a rush during the inspection, you see. I would pity anyone who stood in his way. And that was the last time you saw him? Yes. I stayed in the laboratory until 20 minutes to 11, when I heard the cries of Albert and Mr. Hamish from the large glass house. I joined them as soon as I could for I knew that something must be very wrong. What exactly were you doing in the laboratory? I was recording an experiment for my thesis. I only stopped my work once when Mr. Hamish visited me briefly around 10 o'clock. You say you were recording an experiment when the tragedy occurred. Might I listen to the role? Oh, certainly, please do. You will find it in the laboratory. It is number 320. Uh, thank you, miss. Everyone has gone, Holmes. The way is clear.
it wasn't like that. When Montague Dunn was standing close by the plants, the caterpillars were released and caused the deadly spores to activate. Panicking and likely already half asphyxiated, Montague Dunn started back and knocked over the bust. He rushed to the door, but it was locked. He had to force it open with his shoulder. We already know the outcome. Montague Dunn collapsed and died not far from the pool. Well, it is time to perform our experiment on the ventilation system. First of all, I need to visit the colonial collection room to see how those caterpillars dropped onto the deadly plants. The caterpillars could only fall from the ventilation duct. Our caterpillars are in place. I'll activate the ventilation system so that they fall down. Watson, stay here and observe. All right, Holmes. The power is on. The engine cannot be started whilst the transmission is active. The engine has started. The power is on. The ventilation system is working. Excellent. This ventilation fan is working. Let us see if I can activate the other one. Perfect. 
Now I just need to find Watson to check the result. It works perfectly, Holmes. Bravo. Now, if you could just help me to get rid of these caterpillars. Perfect. Now we know how the murder of Montague Dunn was carried out by activating both Albert's and Mr. Hamish's fans. But only from Mr. Hamish's workplace would it be possible to see when Montague Dunn entered the colonial collection room. Let's go to Scotland Yard. Inspector, I believe that Martin Hamish is guilty of the murder of Montague Dunn. Aha! I knew it! I'll send the lads around to arrest him. Very good. I shall wait to hear from you. Inspector, I came here as quickly as I could. Martin Hamish is in the large glass house. There's no need to hurry. Holmes, my God! Yes, we found him like that. Our messing around with the ventilation system didn't go unnoticed. Mr. Hamish realized that we knew. Inspector, could you arrange the body, please? I should like to examine it. The mark around the neck is very visible. He died instantly. Holmes, his left shoe is unique. This anomaly is often a characteristic of... A club foot. Bravo, Watson. That is the key element of this case. Something about this rings very oddly. Why do you say that, Mr. Holmes? Why? 
because of Mr. Hamish's club foot. Oh, I deserve to be kicked from here to Charing Cross. I should have noticed it. But, Mr. Holmes, I can't see why. No, I don't suppose you do. You must recall that Mr. Dunn was locked inside the Colonial Collection Room by the murderer. If it was Mr. Hamish, he would have had to run up to his workplace to trigger the fan situated above it, taking into consideration the condition of his foot. Well, it is still possible. Perhaps, but it is rather strange that such a person as Mr. Hamish decided to base his plan on the speed of his gait. You mean to say that somebody helped him? So the suicide is questionable? Correct. Mr. Hamish accuses only himself in his letter, and so the investigation stops. Possibly an accomplice, then? That idea had not occurred to me, Mr. Holmes. I have another idea, Inspector. Thanks to the testimony that we have collected, we are able to rebuild the events as they took place that day. With a timeline, such as we did in the Jack the Ripper case. Precisely. The map at the entrance of Kew Gardens should help us with our timeline. Let us analyze the facts and statements so that we may recreate the events of that morning. Let us summarize. Montague Dunn was poisoned inside the colonial collection room. He forced open the door, 
which means that someone locked him inside there at 10.20. Martin Hamish was last seen at 10.10. This means that he has approximately 10 minutes to lock the door of the Colonial Collection Room. Given that he was club-footed, it is doubtful. Albert also has 10 minutes to lock the door of the Colonial Collection Room, which is quite enough time. Miss White was last seen at 10 o'clock, which means that she had approximately 20 minutes to lock the door. More than enough time. Perfect, Watson. Now, let us ascertain who assisted Martin Hamish in killing Montague Dunn. But Holmes, how can you be certain that we'll find Miss White here? It is obvious, Watson. Just use your brain. I am using it. I do use it. Now that the rope has tightened around Martin Hamish, Miss White must act to erase all traces of her implication. After the suicide of her accomplice, there is one final trace remaining. The deadly plants of the Divine Syndicate. She will be there. Very good. Shall we go? Just one moment. Now listen to me, Watson. I shall see her alone. You will conceal yourself behind her. Quietly. Whatever are you planning? Nothing spectacular. The impulses of women have always been a mystery to me. But she is a bold one, and so we must be cautious. All right. You can count on me, Holmes. Mr. Holmes, good day to you. You do not seem surprised, Miss White. Well, I was expecting you. Not for too long, I believe. So please tell me, as it is still unclear, who planned the murder? Was it you? You were wrong, Mr. Holmes. It was Martin Hamish, then. You managed to convince him to take on a more prominent role. <laughs> you could not be further from the truth. You think that you can fool me? You don't care what I think. It is difficult to care about someone who is capable of pushing a man to his suicide. It is over, Miss White. The police will be here any minute. Over? Perhaps. One moment you are here, and the next you are on the other side. The other side? No! Stop! I beg you not to do this, Miss White. Don't come any closer. Please remain calm. We can help you. Not one step further. Don't try to stop me. Stop this foolishness. You cannot truly want to die. 
No, it's too late. This is are you it? I'm afraid not. Where are you going, Holmes? Have you been invited somewhere? We have been invited, Watson. We have? Where to? To the Baker Street Irregulars annual dinner. They sent us an invitation. It is on the table. A dinner? How could those street urchins afford anything like that? I can't understand your interest in them, Holmes. They're dirty. They wouldn't hesitate to steal your wallet. They... Watson, you should be excited. It is a secret dinner. Its location changes every year. Read the menu. Sounds mouth-watering. All right. We, the secret police of Baker Street, invite you, Sherlock Holmes, and Dr. Watson to our annual dinner. Menu, entree, frozen rathead salad. Is, is this a joke? Not at all. Pray continue. Main course... Sow's udder in Danny Nutcracker's way. Ah, oh, sounds disgusting, Holmes. Hedgehog goulash. Street turnips in homemade juice. And it goes on. Ah, I can hear them on the stairs now. Oh, we can't go there. We can't eat that. Watson, you'll hurt the feelings of those poor children. We have to go. Oh, Mr. Holmes. It is fine, Mrs. Hudson. Mr. Holmes! Wiggins, Dr. Watson is getting ready. He will be delighted to join us. You don't look well, my young man. Is there something wrong? Don't tell me the dinner is cancelled. Mr. Holmes is my brother, Leighton. He's in a prison cell. They say he's killed two men. You have to help us, Mr. Holmes, because I know he didn't do it. Where is he now? From what I've heard, they took him to the yard and they gave him a good beating already. You know what they're like. They'll hang him. They won't look any further. Holmes, we have to help him. And forget about the dinner. Wiggins, I'll take the case. You're fantastic, Mr. Holmes. I'll be waiting for you at the crime scene. You'll be there, right? It's on Half Moon Street in Whitechapel. Very well. Whitechapel, I'm going to leave the
Uh, please, gentlemen, leave the scene now. Oh, Mr. Holmes, is that you? Uh, good evening, uh, Constable... Constable Marrow. I was here with Inspector Aberline during the Ripper case, Mr. Holmes, back in 88. But then this is nothing like that case. With this one, we've got the murderer, the weapon and the statements which speak for themselves. Of course, Marrow. But you know that appearances can sometimes be deceiving. Who were the victims? The two men here, both shot. The stab fellow was Brian Facotti, a well-known ruffian. The other, Kenneth Butler, a jeweler by trade. Oh, you spoke of statements. You have witnesses? Well, I was there, so I gave my own statement. And then there were two other witnesses who said they saw the killer chap. Mr. Turner, a gentleman who lives in that flat over there. And Polly Powell, a flower seller, who was over at the far side of the street. So, Constable Marrow, I should be delighted to hear your testimony. I was standing at the north side of Half Moon Street. That was the side that you came from. But you would have been unable to observe this part of the street, where we are standing now. That is correct. But I saw the two victims slowly enter Half Moon Street, and then shortly after, the fireworks started. A few minutes after that, the fellow Chapman rushed towards me and ran into Half Moon Street. Mm, please continue. I didn't pay attention, but suddenly I heard a woman's cries and police whistles on the other side of Half Moon Street. I rushed over there and I saw the two dead bodies on the ground. When I reached Whitechapel Street, I saw Leighton Chapman. He'd been caught by two police constables. Did you hear the shots? I didn't hear any shots. The fireworks were all over the sky. They were so loud I couldn't hear anything else. Now, what were the fireworks in honour of, uh, Constable? Well, uh, today's Queen Victoria's birthday, Mr. Holmes. Ah, uh, yes, I appear to have lost track of the days. It is May now, of course. The Constable Marrow, what else caught your attention while you were running through Half Moon Street? I saw nothing but rats, and I took the time to light every corner with my lamp. Did you happen to look up at Mr. Turner's window when you were on Half Moon Street at that time? Yes, I saw that the window was open, but no one was there. It was dark in the room. Constable, your statements have been of great value to me. The bullet struck his head. This man didn't stand a chance. A piece of wood that has stuck between the cobblestones. Let us take a closer look. Hmm. This shard of wood is quite new. This is an ordinary key. I wonder what kind of door it opens. A tattoo from Westgate Prison. Vicotti must have done some time there. He tried to stop the bleeding with his hand. Death 
was not instant. The bullet penetrated his stomach, a dreadful wound. Brian Vercotti suffered greatly. What a terrible way to die. Mr. Holmes, did you see my brother at Scotland Yard? Is he all right? Good evening. Oh, I, I heard Constable Barrow. Excellent. Could you tell us everything that you may have seen or heard? I was already in bed when the fireworks started. A few moments after, I clearly heard two gunshots from outside. Please continue. I quickly got up and I grabbed the lamp from my nightstand and I rushed towards the window. I looked down and I saw two bodies. And there was a man with a gun who was standing nearby. Where exactly? Well, near this body. Did he notice you? I don't think so. He rushed towards Whitechapel Street without looking around. Mr. Turner, did you see anyone else in the street? No, I saw no one but that man, the murderer, the fellow they caught. Were the two shots you heard consecutive? Yes, there was a very short pause between them, and, and, and they sounded different somehow. It seemed to me that the second shot was louder than the first. That is an interesting comment. Mr. Turner, what were your actions after you stepped up to the window? I was afraid that the man with a gun might return, so I stayed close to the window till I saw the policeman coming in the half moon from Whitechapel. Then I walked out to tell them everything I saw. You have helped us a great deal, Mr. Turner. It would be my pleasure to assist you with your investigation, Mr. Holmes. Mrs. Powell? What do you want? My name is Sherlock Holmes. 
I'm assisting the police with their investigation of the crime that took place this evening. Well, I've already gave my testimony, but very well. Could you tell us everything that you may have seen or heard? Yes, yes. I was selling my flowers as usual, and then the fireworks began in honour of Queen Victoria. I enjoyed those. But then, all of a sudden, a young lad ran out of Half Moon Street and stopped just by me. He had a gun in his hand. He was like a ghost and all covered in blood. It was dark, but I could see him because of the flashes from the fireworks. And then? I screamed as loud as I could. I knew that a policeman should be on duty in the vicinity. He had no time to escape. Two constables got him. Then another constable came out from the very same street and I heard him talking of a horrible murder. Did you see anyone else leaving Half Moon Street prior to or at the time of the crime? No, sir. I did not. Even with all the fireworks, I was very attentive, as I'm always on the lookout for customers. Mrs. Powell, did you hear the gunshots? I'm not sure. You know, what with the fireworks? My thanks to you, Mrs. Powell. Mr. Turner, you have stated that you remained close by your window after the crime, is that correct? Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. I stayed at my window until the policeman arrived to examine the dead bodies. That is very interesting, Mr. Turner. Constable Marrow stated that he did not see anyone at the window when he was running through Half Moon Street. Oh, well, I, I think... Constable Marrow and me, we might have been distracted by the whistles and shouts coming from Whitechapel. We could have missed each other somehow. Do you understand what I mean? It was a bit of a stressful moment to tell you the truth, sir. Allow me to form my own theories, Mr. Turner. Would you mind showing me the view that you had from your window? Uh, not, not at all, Mr. Holmes. Please, follow me. Mr. Turner appears to live very modestly. So, Mr. Turner broke his stick. The books on this shelf are in a mess. It looks as though Mr. Turner was trying to find something in a hurry here, a short while ago. Mr. Turner was roused from his bed by the sound of gunshots. This fire is dying out. It was last tended to over an hour ago. The papers are almost entirely burned. I am unable to see what's written here. These words are illegible. The papers were thrown into the fire just a short while ago. This kitchen knife is quite sharp.
There are pieces of shredded paper scattered over the table. His kitchen knife was used to cut the paper. Anything else you would like to know, Mr. Holmes? So, that's the view Mr. Turner had when he opened the window. The dead body of Kenneth Butler. Brian Vercotti's contorted corpse. Mr. Turner had a perfect view of the crime scene. He saw the bodies clearly, and Leighton Chapman standing over them. So Mr. Turner used a book to hide an object that he found on Kenneth Butler's body. The question is, what did he find? I can see prints from greasy fingers upon the cup. Well now, what a find, a precious jewel concealed inside a book. A bracelet with unique ram's head design, a distinctive feature of ancient Grecian artifacts, probably of the Hellenistic era.
Mr. Turner, how would it be possible for a man of advanced years, such as yourself, to rush from his bed to the window in a matter of seconds, as you have stated? Well, uh, I'm, I'm able to move very quickly, despite my age, and when the situation requires it, Mr. Holmes. I highly doubt that, Mr. Turner. I observe that you suffer a severe limp due to your injured right leg. It would have taken at least ten seconds for you to approach the window. That means you could have easily missed something, or someone, in Half Moon Street during that time. You're right, Mr. Holmes. I could have missed something. But it did seem to me that everything happened so quickly. Oh, time can pull tricks on you. And what of everything else that you told us? Mr. Turner, it is vital that we have your complete and true statement. Mr. Holmes, I do assure you that the other things I said were most sincere. Mr. Turner, you were not sincere with me. Not then and not now. But, but, but Mr. Holmes... This, Mr. Turner, does not look like anything that a poor man might possess. It is worth more than the home that you live in. I, I can explain. No, merely correct me if I am wrong. You saw Leighton Chapman through the window, but you also noticed a glittering object on the ground, this precious jewel. You walked down and took the bracelet from the body of Kenneth Butler, and when you heard the whistles, you hurried away. That broke your walking stick. It caught fast between the cobbles. Constable Marrow was unable to see you in the window as you were climbing up the stairs on your way back to your flat. Upon returning home, you hid the precious jewel inside a book. Mr. Holmes, please don't send me to prison. I didn't do anything bad. I'm just a poor man. When I chanced upon the bracelet, I saw it as an opportunity to make a little money. I was desperate. I only took the bracelet, that's all I swear. You made a mistake by lying to me. But you are not a criminal. I believe that. Although I must return this bracelet to its rightful owner. It would be my pleasure to assist you with your... That is not the one I need. That is not the one I That is not the one I need. That is not the one I need. That is not the That is not That is not the one I need. Here it is. I need to continue my research in my archives. Here it is. One of the victims, Kenneth Butler, 
was involved in the story of the stolen Hellenistic treasures. A visit to his pawn shop should tell me more. Mr. Holmes, what if I'm interested? I beg. <laughs> Look, you are free. T Did you find anything else? A few, per. Thank you. <laughs> These cigarettes are filled with cheap tobacco. Nothing interesting. A cheap watch. Bought with his own money, no doubt. So this is the gun that Leighton was holding when he was caught by the police. It is a Webley revolver, a reliable weapon. And it seems as though the shells were not removed from the cylinder. Two out of the six shells have been fired. There were two shots. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Good evening, Mr. Chapman. Who are you? I've got nothing to say. It's all a mistake. Calm down, Leighton. I have come here to help you. To find out if you truly are innocent, as your younger brother Wiggins has told me. My brother? You know him? Then that means you're... Sherlock Holmes. Oh, blimey. All right, Mr. Rhymes, I'll tell you everything.
Good. Tell me your account of what happened. I left my work, and I hurried up to see the fireworks in Whitechapel. I was late, so I decided to cut through off Moon Street. I saw the first fireworks light up in the sky. I bumped into a constable on a corner before entering Half Moon. And then suddenly, what with all the firework flare, I saw two men. They were both lying flat in the middle of the street. I stopped where I was. I, I thought about turning back to the police, but as I was thinking of that, I saw a fur person. He was leaning over the body that was furthest from me. The second I saw him, he raised his head and he stared at me. In a flash, I saw his gun, but he made a dash for it instead and he escaped through Whitechapel Street. So you might still have had time to return to the constable. I panicked. I, I didn't know what to do. Anyway, I, I approached the bodies just to see if they were still alive. I saw that one had blood pumping out of his stomach. He was dying. It was horrible. The second one was already dead. He had a hole in his head. He was holding a gun in his hand, though. I took it, and then I followed the third man. Interesting. Pray continue. I turned the corner, and I saw the man standing in the middle of the street. He seemed to be in some, some sort of panic. And then, Mr. Holmes, something strange happened. I told the police, and they laughed at what I said, but I swear to you, my words are true. I started running towards him. But then I was blinded by a flash. It was so bright that I hardly saw anything for a good dozen seconds. But I kept running forward. As I arrived in Whitechapel, I heard a woman screaming. And then I was caught by the police. But there wasn't a trace of that man. Of course, then they found a gun and all that blood. I couldn't see the murderer escaping and all that mess. Perhaps I was still half-blinded at that moment. A thrilling account, my young man. Layton, are you able to describe the person whom you saw standing in Half Moon Street? Well, I wasn't able to see his face at all. It was too dark, and he was too far away. I could see his silhouette. Hmm, and what about that? Nothing so special. He was wearing a jacket. He was quite average in, in size and his weight. I see. Was there anything else that struck you at the time? No. But perhaps... It's strange, but... I can't remember the sound of his footsteps as he was running away. Perhaps it was because of the fireworks or, or the surprise of me seeing him. Leighton, I confess I am puzzled. Why should a young lad like you take a gun from the hands of a dead man and set off in pursuit of a probable killer? I know. I keep wondering that, but at the time it was, it was like a reflex. A criminal ought to be arrested, and he was armed. You were willing to risk your life. That was a little foolish, unless you wanted revenge. No, Mr. Holmes. I was just being brave and stupid. I'm sure that you were, but I believe that you may have recognized one of the victims, Brian Vercotti. You knew that gentleman well, did you not? How? However could you know that? You have a typical tattoo of the Westgate Brotherhood upon your hand. I observed exactly the same mark upon Mr. Vercotti. You came to know him from your sharing a past prison sentence. Am I correct, Mr. Chapman? Oh, God. You're right, Mr. Holmes. Would you tell me a little about Brian Vercotti? We were convicted for a robbery. Once in prison, both of us joined one of these fraternities. During that year, we tried to help each other out, you know? And you were quite young then, I believe. Yes, Mr. Holmes, we were. We'd only stolen a pound of meat. After we were released, and when I saw what my little brother had become, I decided to work towards living an honest life. And Vercotti? He had a hard time. His sister had died in a Whitechapel dispensary while he was in prison. He had no family anymore. Our path split. He fell back into crime. So you lost him? Yes. And for around two years, I heard no news of him at all. 
We shall see you soon, young man. Mr. Butler's key matches the lock perfectly. Crampons and a sharp ice axe would only be brought here by a mountaineer. A flare pistol. Perhaps it was pawned by a destitute sailor. The ram's heads. This necklace belongs to the five rams of Mittelin collection. Interesting. That means that Kenneth Butler owned a part of this collection all this time, ten years after the theft. It looks as though Mr. Butler kept a careful record of his operations.
What's up with you, lad? What are you waiting for? I'm waiting for my brother to be released. Your brother? The one that you caught, beat up and imprisoned. Ah, the murderer. He ain't killed no one, copper. Watch your mouth, lad, else you'll be joining that worthless brother of yours. Unable to see any higher, I need to find something to lift my lamp. Mr. Holmes, did you see my brother at Scotland Yard? Is he all right? Hmm. This mirror is turned towards Half Moon Street. This should be you. <laughs> Nothing interesting here. This is most definitely a bullet hole. The brick cracks are fresh. Watson, there was a third shot fired in this street. Constable Marrow, I would value your assistance in this investigation. It would be my pleasure, Mr. Holmes. I would like to make sure that there are no places in Half Moon Street where a man could hide while you were running through it with your lamp. All right, Mr. Holmes, what should I do? Take your lamp and start walking, just as you did before, and try to find me. Understood. I can see you very well, Mr. Holmes. All right, Constable. Let's try again. I'll find another place to hide. Here you are, Mr. Holmes. 
All right, Constable. Let's try again. I'll find another place to hide. Mr. Holmes, it wasn't difficult to find you at all. It is obvious now. No one could escape Constable Marrow's lamp while hiding in the street. These tools are exactly what I need to climb the wall. This is exactly what we need in order to imitate the flash of the fireworks. Why are you looking at me all the time like that? I'm just watching you, lad. I never know what to expect from people like you. People like me? Yes, street beggars and thieves. I ain't a thief. Oh, no. Then where did you get whatever it is that you're gnawing on? I very much doubt that you bought it. What ain't seen can't hardly be stolen. Constable Marrow, Watson, I would like to perform another kind of reenactment with your help. I'm listening, Mr. Holmes. I want to check if Leighton's testimony can be trusted, if someone could vanish into thin air at a specific moment. But, Holmes, I don't see how. I am going to be the mysterious gentleman whom Leighton followed. I will stand exactly where he saw him before he was blinded by the flash. Watson. You will be Leighton. When I fire the signal flare, you should start to chase me. I understand, Holmes. You, Constable Marrow, just play your part and do exactly as you did. Just, please, wait five seconds after the signal flare. I doubt that Polly Powell would have screamed any earlier. As you say, Mr. Holmes. Let us begin, then. Catch me if you can. this wall. Anyone trying to climb it would be easily spotted by Constable Marrow. 
This wall is cast in shadow. It would be difficult to see anyone scaling it. Barely see anything. <coughs> Holmes, are you there? <coughs> Where is he? My God, a man can't just disappear like that. Holmes, Holmes. Where are you? I cannot see you, Mr. Holmes. Dr. Watson, it seems that Mr. Holmes has disappeared. Don't worry, gentlemen. I am up here, above your heads. How on earth did you get up there, Holmes? I am using crampons and a climbing axe, although the person we are looking for did not leave any traces of such tools. Constable, is there any way to get to the top of this building? Yes, Mr. Holmes, I can show you. The door to the building can be found from Whitechapel Street. Gentlemen, I am on my way down. It's empty. Someone broke through the window to get inside the attic, but in his haste he ripped his jacket. A cluster of thick black threads. They're unusually strong. I should examine them under the microscope. Let us take a closer look. It is not a thread, but a hair. I very much doubt that it is human. I need to compare this sample with a human hair and a horse hair. Hmm, a shaving brush is usually made from horse hair. Watson. Uh, could you please pass me your shaving brush? Here you are. Uh, Watson, look. What's outside the window? Well, I don't see anything. Ouch! Holmes! Oh, don't make such a fuss. One little hair. Check 
human hair is significantly thinner than the black sample. The horse hair is thinner than the hair that we found. So, this black hair belongs to an animal, and it is larger than a horse, a hair from a large and exotic animal. Beer. I'm always wondering what... Wiggins is currently at Half Moon Street. Wiggins is currently at Half Moon... Wiggins, my lad, what are you doing here? You'd best be leaving and be quick about it. I've done nothing wrong. You'd learn more by watching Mr. Holmes. He knows exactly what he's doing, not like you. Oi, watch your tongue. Mr. Holmes? We have good news for you, Wiggins. The investigation has proven very interesting so far. We found facts and details that confirm your brother's innocence. I knew it, Mr. Holmes. But for now, Wiggins, we need your help. Anything you like, Gov. I need you to locate a circus that has stopped over in London. It needs to have disposed of at least one exotic animal, a very large one. You can count on me, Mr. Holmes. Mm, I will be back. I do hope that those children don't get into trouble, Holmes. Don't worry, Watson. I predict some news in... seven seconds. Mr. Holmes, we found it! Here it is! And this is a young Indian elephant, the highlight of the show. <laughs> Duval Brothers, a well-known traveling circus that is currently stopped in London. I believe that is exactly the type of circus we are looking for. I'll pay it a visit. A visit.
I think like thank you for that. Chill out that circus like now. Hi, you! Stop right there! Good morning, sir. Pardon me, but why am I not allowed to walk around here? Because it's private. Well, I only wanted to meet the artists. Hmm? You're wanting to apply for... Nah, you don't look like the type of uh, artistic lockpicker that we're looking for. You might be surprised. What? Nah, I don't think so. Clear off. You're a bit slow to catch on, eh? Get lost. You're a bit slow to catch on, eh? Get lost. The make of I have to disguise myself. Mm -hmm. I did last time. Yeah, Okay, this will do, I think. Right. Spectacles are unpopular among thugs. I don't want to arouse suspicion. Okay. I don't need to. Stay where you are. What are you doing here, and where is Sherlock Holmes? Calm down, Watson. Take deep breaths now. It's me. Oh, thank God, Holmes. I can't get used <laughs> to your disguises. Thank you, Watson. That means... What's your name? My name is Nigel. I'm here to open the locks. Talented, eh? Let's see. Go inside the marquee and show yourself to Charles Foley. And I'd highly advise you not to trick him. Got that? I've got it. Is here just as you asked. And what about the money? Some of the barrels are wet. Transportation issues, it couldn't be helped. Whatever. We'll be here after midnight to pick up the supplies. I want to be paid first. No. You'll be paid after we make the transfer, as I said. You right? I hope that no one saw you. The police are on the lookout. Of course not. I'm a professional. Glad to hear it. Be ready for tonight then. From lambs 
into lions. Those are... That's a picture of a contemporary gentleman. This poster was clearly made to fi... Hmm. There are enough posters to paste across half of London's walls. This printing press is old. Charles Foley is inside the marquee. This wooden barrel is damaged. It is difficult to say what is inside. There is a spot on this barrel that was intentionally painted out. The crest of the Honorable Artillery Company. Could it be gunpowder? I need to be sure. Judging by the fractions and the scent, I can the barrels are roughly clustered. It seems as though they were brought here in a hurry. Powder kegs, a printing press, and a great many blank papers. All of this was stolen by the merry men quite recently. And these poster samples, I am quite sure it is not. Stop right here. Who are you? Are you Charles Foley? Maybe. They say that I can open any door. Do they now? We'll see her lock near the chains on the table over there. Open that. Thank you. 
Oh. Well, hey, right. What's your name? Nigel Shirley, from York. Ah, Nigel from York. Never heard anything about you. How'd you hear about me? It's a long story. I met your brother, Vincent the Butcher Foley, in prison. He told me all about his betrayal, and all about you. Before I was released, he told me that you might find a job for me one day, and pay me some money for me craft. Well, he died. Seven days ago, in prison. Hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. That's all right. The traitor has paid the blood price for it. And you'll do the job anyway, because I need a talented look picker. I know just where to search for his legacy. It's all about the Hellenistic treasures, isn't it? Gosh, you fool. Now, listen up. You'll come with us tonight, and you better mind yourself. Us? Wait, who's coming then? Billy, Jack and me. And what will I get for that? We'll share the loot. The one you seem to know about. Right. Wait for us at the abandoned manor house on a corner of Ledbrook Grove and Kensington Park Road at midnight. Deal. Nothing will matter. Here I am at the manor. Somewhere inside it are the Hellenistic treasures. This lock is quite old. It shouldn't be much of a challenge. I need to find where the safe is hidden and lockpick it.
This cupboard is an absolute mess. This cupboard is an absolute mess. Several books have fallen from the shelves. It seems as though this cupboard can be moved. I'll give it a try. So, What a surprise! Another lock! Hmm, and I won't be able to pick it. I recall that precious key around Foley's neck. It might... Let us check the thieves' possible escape routes in the event that they are caught off guard by the police from the front door. This door is a perfect means of escape in an emergency. This door is a perfect means of escape in an emergency. This door leads to a kitchen, which holds the shortest route to the back door. This should be useful. A solid rope. The door is now blocked. I suppose that the thieves already tried to open the lock with this formidable hammer, but they were unsuccessful. I wonder what this old chandelier is doing on the floor. It looks as though it was poorly attached. The door is now blocked. This should be useful. Now, if anyone takes the hammer, the rope will uncoil and make the chandelier fall. 
If he runs through the dining room and takes a sledgehammer to force open the door, the chandelier will knock him down. The ground floor window is a perfect way to escape the police. This works very well. No one will escape through this window now. There is no ladder. If anyone falls here, he will need assistance to get out. This door is a perfect means of escape in an emergency. Although this window is high above the ground, it would be possible for one of the thieves to attempt to use it for their escape. This should be useful. One step on these beads and our thief will go flying. I should walk carefully here, else my plan will be ruined. Any thief who finds his way upstairs will roll down very quickly. This should be useful. <laughs> now, it's not an open hatch, just a nice carpet. I should walk carefully here. Now, if a thief runs through the kitchen, He'll pay us. The traps for my circus companions are all prepared. I can leave now, but I'll return later with Charles Foley and his companions. Hey, go. Stop where you are! Where are they? Trapped, Watson, with your assistance. How so? Well, you sounded just like a real Bobby, my dear fellow. You startled them into the traps. I did? I assure you, Watson, it was quite an entertaining show. They will not escape the house now. You scum! And this is the pistol used for the murder in Half Moon Street. How do you know about that? Have you closed the case yet, Sherlock? 
Mycroft, what are you doing here? Did you follow me? Sherlock, it may seem that I used you, but you should be pleased to know that you have served our queen well in this instance. So now, let us catch the big fish. But this man is not one of the merry men. No. Then why exactly are we here, Sherlock? This gentleman, Charles Foley, has been involved in a double murder and the hunter of a set of valuable antiques, the Hellenistic treasures, which disappeared in a... Th You're no better than a coppers! Holmes, that is incredible. The Hellenistic treasures. Indeed. Nothing but trifles. Where are the merry men? I don't know why you are asking me, Mycroft. They are yours to find. I'll see you soon, dear brother. Don't move, you. Did I miss something? I did. I fucking missed something. The trap with the chandelier worked perfectly. Charles Foley has been knocked down. Let's see. Charles Foley, you committed the crime of premeditated murder and of theft. You will be severely punished for your deeds. You are pitiful, you Scotland Yard dog. Save your words for the gallows. I am sure the journalists will love them. I shall leave now, Watson. Gentlemen, please take our friends here into custody. Where are you going? I have unfinished business. I'll see you at Baker Street. Be careful with the lamps. Don't bring them too close to the barrels. Good evening, gentlemen. Who's there? That is of no importance. What matters is who you are and the plans that you have here. <laughs> so you can stop us from carrying them out? Eventually, yes. Hey, careful. You'll blow us all up. I'm listening. We are a group known as the Merry Men. But I suppose you knew that already. We are the men who've already lost everything of value. We are ruined. Sh we were forced out from our homes and thrown onto the street. And all of this, the laws that were... We are not only from the British Empire. Some of us are from the New Lands, America. But men, we are still. And we are merry for that we stopped being afraid. For those powers that... The fit bankers and they... We should not fear them. The time we are going... There are... That is a radical step to take. Chaos. They will be... What you are... How do you see justice, then? Kids go to prison for a loaf of dry bread. And how many lords do you see... Our... Will you... When people fight the order... They are too blind to see the consequences that throw society into chaos. I shall stop your actions, but not you. Run. Now!
missed it. Huh? I really did. So, you're in twice. It is. Really? <laughs> yes. Mm. They were. Tell me, Doctor. Does my brother ship? Uh, not. Because you. Well, uh, his. And the Empire need. People. <laughs> Your truth, Doctor, that may prove immoral. Allowing people to terrorize London. Destabilizing the whole Empire. Terrorize only the powers whom you serve, Mycroft. Not I, not Watson, not Mrs. Hudson, not Wiggins. Sherlock, the Merry Men are to be stopped. Not by me. You created the Merry Men. Stop them yourself. Only make sure that you don't create ten more Merry Men by arresting the one. Good night, Dr. Watson. Anything in the post, Watson? Any clients worthy of our attention? Only a second reminder from Mrs. Hudson about our new neighbor. She urges you to remove your... Oh, I don't care about that. Holmes, the lady who will be moving in shortly has requested the use of our spare room to place all of her boxes. Wait, what? A... a lady? Okay, but I lost something. I think I finished the game. I did. Chilo, should we link it in the game with that? Is it still going? I don't think, but I'm going to go back now. This is okay. We already get that. And if I still continue, Okay, this game is finished. I think. I'm done with all the fixes, so see you later, guys.